Applying the red NVIDIA Profile Inspector settings could double your FPS in CS. Besides that, many people also have no clue how to properly set up their in-game settings because something like the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Mode could completely cook your FPS. On top of that, it's also so important that you're utilizing the maximum speed of your RAM, especially for a game like Counter-Strike. So therefore, I'm gonna cover everything which is somewhat important and even give you my own custom NVIDIA profile, which you can straight up apply for the best NVIDIA settings for CS. But you know what's just as important as having good FPS in CS? Having really good ping. And this is where Gear Booster comes in clutch. You can try out Gear Booster for absolutely free with the top link in the video description. Just simply select the games which you guys are trying to play, which is gonna be CS2, and it's gonna automatically show you the best DNS server in your near so that you have the least amount of ping in CS. It also features a built-in packet loss protection service, so therefore if you're struggling with high ping in CS or just network issues in general, just simply run GR Booster, select CS and enjoy having better ping. You can try it out as mentioned for absolutely free with the link in the description. Now, boost player contrast, in my opinion, is pretty amazing, so therefore I keep it enabled. These things should be disabled. And now let's continue with the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency mode, because many people have no clue how this actually works. For a very long time, NVIDIA had a mode which was called Maximum Pre-Rendered Frames, which means the frame which you see right now on screen while playing a game has actually been pre-rendered. And there's already three more frames being pre-rendered from that second on, which means the picture is never really up to date. It's always outdated by usually three frames. And with Maximum Pre-Rendered frames, you could reduce the amount of pre-rendered pictures to only one. Which on paper sounds amazing, right? I mean, you have less latency. But the problem was, this was really CPU intense. Which means that even if you had lower input delay, theoretically, your FPS got tanked maybe by 100 or 150 FPS, depending on your system. So therefore, the potential less delay wasn't maybe even worth it, since you were losing so many FPS. And now the thing is, this mode was built into the driver. And now CS2 has this sort of built into the game engine for syncing. So with the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency mode, on disabled, you're getting a ton of delay. If you put it on enabled now, the mode now is already reducing the amount of pre-rendered frames as close as possible to only just being one at a time, while being a lot less CPU intense, which means that most people can comfortably actually enable this setting. And it's gonna give you a lot less latency and make CS feel a lot snappier. And now if you put this on enable plus boost, you are now even reducing the idle time of your GPU, which means your GPU is gonna run at a higher clock speed, basically giving you even less delay. And if you're not having the best cooling in your PC, like the best airflow, this could cause overheating issues, which means your clock speed over time is gonna clock down and you're losing FPS again. Especially if your GPU hits over 83, 85 degrees, depending on the series which you have, I'm just gonna assume most people are gonna have a RTX series by now. For the 30th series, it was 84 degrees, and for the 40th series, I think it was 86 degrees. From where on, you're gonna have thermal throttle. So therefore, if you wanna use Enable Plus Boost, always make sure that you have good cooling in your PC case. Other than that, Enabled is completely fine. Now, maximum in-game FPS, always put this to zero. You wanna get as much as you can, basically. In menus, doesn't really matter. Multi-frame sampling, anti-lazing mode. Personally, I would say you're gonna need something between 2x MSAA and 4x. Other than that, edges around objects or even player models are just gonna look too bad. I'm gonna showcase this, yeah? This is now 4x MSAA. You can see all the edges here around player models. And if you now put it to none, you can see how bad it looks from a distance. Of course, for performance issues, you could completely turn this off, but you can see how ugly all these objects look like. So therefore, personally, 2 or 4x MSAA is the best. 8 is completely unnecessary. That's like too much already. Now, the global shadow quality, very important. You can put this completely on low because this only changes static objects, something like this palm tree, this car here, um, the wire which is here. You can put them completely on low because those aren't the static ones from player models moving around on the map, which actually give you a competitive advantage. They still look completely fine on low. Like, don't get me wrong there. This is completely playable. But dynamic shadows is where you should always enable all. Let me explain. We have sun only and all. If you put this on sun only and you have a player moving outside, you're gonna see the shadow completely fine. But as soon as he goes in, into a house where it's basically like created light, something like Mirage, Palace or something like that, apartments. You're not gonna see the shadows anymore because there's no sunlight in these houses inside. Or in Dust 2 on tunnels, you have no sunlight in there. So you're gonna lose the competitive advantage. Always put this on all. Model and texture details, completely on low. Don't really care about it. Even on low, they look completely fine in my opinion. Like, you're not playing CS to actually take a look here at the textures. Texture filtering as well on the completely lowest, don't care about it. Now shader details. Now shader details, again, you can put it on low. Sort of affects how shaders are being thrown at objects, walls and stuff like that. As long as I still got them, I'm completely fine with it. Now next up, we have high dynamic range, which basically just controls light lightning, how it bounces off surfaces and walls again, 
flashes being rendered and all of that. Don't really care about it for competitive, just only put it on performance. And now we have Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is overall rendering the whole entire game at a worse or better quality. Here I gotta say, you gotta experience around for yourself which works the best for your system, guys. For me personally, I can keep it on disabled, which is the highest quality which most pros are playing on, because if you put it on performance, as an example, here's a direct comparison now, you can just see how much worse the whole entire game is getting rendered. You still have all of the advantages from everything which I mentioned before. Even if you put it to performance, your 4X MSAA is still gonna do a somewhat decent job keeping edges around objects kind of like sharp, you know, so it doesn't look too weird. So therefore, this one is completely up to you what you value more. If you value higher FPS or better visibility. Of course, balance and quality and ultra quality, this is maybe the range where you want to move around on a more low end to mid end PC. And if you are more on the high end quality, you know, you can just go and disable. And here we are right now on Nuke as an example, and you can see the visibility is basically perfect. You don't need more, you don't need less in CS2. This is basically all you guys are gonna need. You can see completely fine the shadows and everything, which are still in good quality. You can see all the enemies, you can see good contrast. Even like edges here in the distance are still sharp enough, I would say, through the MSAA as mentioned, and everything is gonna look completely fine, decent as it should be. And we're still running 5600 FPS, so we're chilling. And of course, guys, we're gonna cover real quick the best NVIDIA Profile Inspector settings in CS2. What we're gonna need in the first place is the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Just simply Google it up or go into the link in the video description and click under the GitHub link. Then you can see the latest version. We're just simply gonna click onto it and get the NVIDIA Profile Inspector zip file. Once you then open it up, you're just gonna drag the X onto the desktop. Once you launch the tool, you wanna actually type here now Counter-Strike to the top. That way you're now in the Counter-Strike section. And then all you gotta do is go into disco.gg slash list drives like right on your own screen. And then you can see the performance packs channel. And in here, I'm gonna post then my official NVIDIA Profile Inspector settings file into this window here. I'm gonna upload it in here after uploading the video on YouTube. And then all you can do is just simply click onto his download button then you can get it from here. By the way guys, no matter what you're trying to get from Discord, it's always going to tell you potentially dangerous because Discord actually doesn't scan any sort of zip or RAW files. So even if you just 7-zip up a picture and put it on your Discord server, it's always going to tell you this message. But of course, even if you scan it online, let's say as an example here now, you're going to see that all my files are of course 100% safe. Once we're now in the NVIDIA Profile Inspector and you're going to click under Import User Profiles as mentioned and select the profile which you just got from my Discord, this is then how it should look like. Everything which has something to do with G-Sync, I completely always force off. Preferred refresh rate of course always on the highest available and now we have maximum pre-rendered frames the option which i was talking about maximum pre-rendered frames is like the super old mode which has been replaced by the ultra low latency mode which i have in here actually now unenabled and ultra for the control panel state as mentioned ultra is the one where it actually gets as close as possible to one frame only being pre-rendered but now the problem is, this is driver based, which means the ultra latency mode in the NVIDIA settings are gonna get overridden anyways by whatever you apply in Counter-Strike directly because that's in engine. So theoretically, all three of these settings completely play no role in here because they're gonna get overridden by the Counter-Strike setting. Now, anti-aliasing FXAA enabled. This is a super old anti-aliasing method, which is really outdated. That's why I'm only using actually MFAA or MSAA. Where as an example now here, the behavior is actually application controlled. So you're gonna apply any sort of anti-aliasing anyways in Counter-Strike. So all we actually care about is anti-strophic filtering optimization and sample optimization, which help textures load a lot faster in Counter-Strike. Then something like the texture filtering LOD bias, the level of detail is completely irrelevant for Counter-Strike because you're anyways not gonna play around with it. There's only a thing for maybe like Fortnite where you can enable potato graphics. But then the texture filtering quality, you actually want to put on high performance. And then all we have now left is texture filtering trillion optimization, which is going to be on on. And then all you got to do is hit apply changes and close the NVIDIA profile inspector. Everything is now safe and you're good to go. Next up, let's talk about how most people don't even utilize their full RAM speed. On the left side, you can see my PC running at only 2133 megahertz and on the right side with 3200, which is my maximum. Not only is the FPS difference quite noticeable, it's also about stability. Just pay attention to how the right side is more stable overall. So you're basically missing out on what like 5 to 10% of performance, really depending on your PC, sometimes even up to 20%. And all you need for that is open up your BIOS, which for every one of you is gonna be a little bit different, guys. You just simply have to Google your exact mainboard and how to enter the BIOS. And then you have to swap from easy mode, which is in all BIOSes. You know, you always have like this button go from easy mode to advanced mode. And there you can see something along tweaker on the top or really depending on which BIOS you have. As mentioned, this one here is from Gigabyte. You can then find XMP profile, where you can select just simply profile one, which for most of the part is gonna do all of the overclocking for you basically, making sure that your RAM is running at the max megahertz available. The next thing which you wanna do is just simply type in that power into your Windows search bar and go under edit power plan. Once you're in here, go under power options on the top, 
And now you can see that I'm actually using the ultimate performance mode, which is made for more higher end PCs. The thing is, CPU utilization is very important, especially for a game like Counter-Strike, where especially single core performance is essential for FPS. For more mid to low end PCs, you have high performance as an option, which is already in here now pre-applied. And then for most people, actually, if you're running a more capable gaming PC, you should utilize ultimate performance. If this one is not visible for you, you actually have to enable it through comment. And then all you gotta do is go into Windows search bar, type in the CMD, right click onto it and run it as administrator. So actually run the comment prompt and paste in the following comment from the video description. Then press enter and you can see the ultimate performance mode has been applied. Now all we gotta do is go again into Windows search bar, type in their power, then go and choose a power plant. And then you can see that the ultimate performance mode has been actually enabled now in here and put to additional plants. If you can see it straight up, just simply open up the small arrow and you should be able to see it. And if you want to further optimize your windows for performance as well as gaming, make sure that you check out the two videos which are right now on screen, which are going to help you to optimize your Windows PC even more.